to absorb the environment is necessary because that's what art is about. Whatever the bloody environment is, whether it's the ghetto, or whether it is the urban landscape, or whether you're in a Nordic landscape, your environment, yes, but it doesn't have to be a natural environment. Wherever you are, you understand. You ought to work with that. That is what it's all about. You want to be able, like the artist, to have your own take on situations. We are lucky. As artists, we are lucky. But, you know, sorry. You are the hell you want. Under all conditions. That is one thing. There are a lot of people in society out there. Have ideas and things like that. I like to work with wood. Just like I like to draw, I like to work with wood. And it's something I've been doing for many years. And um, I like to work with odd pieces of wood, especially wood that has been kind of discarded or suffered from some burn or something. And try to look for forms in it and recycle. Recycle means in my way, bringing life back to it and so that's what I'm doing right now get a piece of wood play around and see some form emerge and work with it so the other is not a a meaningful name per se, but Sandy Actor is actually the name of a person, right, it is just that apart from the phonetics, a nice sound, that that person Sandy Atta, if you ever find time to research the person, you'll find out the dynamics. Me adopting the name is symbolic basically which simply means overcoming difficulties with humility and that's about enough for Sunday at the talk fortunately I had a very challenging childhood catch my ass so that was good so I had to make everything yeah. I had to um, be creative to make ends meet, you know, when I grew up. So I always had to like make my own clothes, make my own costume, you know. And that was of a need. I had to be creative. I didn't have any, I didn't have much resources to do that. So now I look back, I see that that was like engendering practice. In those early times, I mean, I worked with what was around me, right? And as I moved on, um, I started exploring. You know, I like to work from life and things and then take it and push it beyond. You know, I might move from just recording a phenomenon to, you know, going a little deeper and, you know, adding some psychological components to why I do what I do. Things like that. You know? But I try not to be self analytical and think too much. You know, I just try to respond viscerally to what I'm doing. You understand? Just like how I was when I was young. You know, something inspired me, something challenged me. And I go out there and try to interpret it with what I do, which is drawing, painting, sculpture, pastel inks, you know. Not to really like overdone, sit down, think about it, conjure up a set of shit, write a set of shit about nothing and put some little image out there with a whole dissertation. Now right away, get her from a mood that I'm totally against that. But I guess at our time, we had to actually search for that information. We didn't have the means that we could download imagery or, you know, conversation. You had to actually go and dig it out. So I guess, in a way, I am a little narrow mind. There are certain profound realities that shape us, especially in this 
diaspora now. A lot of us here have emerged through some catastrophic historical um, things such as the Middle Passage, slavery and stuff. Like the sea conjures up that to me, you know, about are there people who still long to return to the original source and the boats come like symbols to that you know it could also be like a possibility of moving on to another state not necessarily a physical state a higher level of consciousness things like that where the desire for individuals to grow to move things like that because you can see that is within my nature to be always evolving and moving things like that my intention is not to resolve it or to spread a message or anything i'm not that good i just dealing with all that shit that going through my head like most creative people your inspiration in my case being a 67 year old obviously inspiration would be over a time span you understand would be over a time span and there will some some sources will be dropped on the way but if i could say underlying that true time and space what inspires me and so the fact that i have from an early age which is about 25 decide that hey this is what i could do alone and that is always an underlying inspiration that I I was determined to go into this thing and see where it take me. So I have that inspiration all the time handed from myself. But I have a lot of respect for myself for being brave enough to make that move then. Right? When it wasn't supposed to be. It was totally not supposed to be. Secondly is that um You know, there are certain abstract things that inspire me all the time. Nature is one. The state that we in, you know, and it's more like on a day-to-day. -day. You get up, is there. Because shit that happened in Manchester is nature. When I say nature, I mean nature is mean that my existence, my world. And I think that happens with most artists contemporary artist contemporary in my understanding is you are here now in it you know the human form the human psyche dealing with with this phenomenon a life that's very important to me i'm very very much responsive to visual visual seeing things you know i i get great pleasure in um you know, seeing and looking and simple pleasure out of that, you know, great pleasure, you know. So, you know, light, color, movement, you know, natural compositions. There are certain aspects that would be more intense and more important at certain stages. You know, like right now, my whole idea is to do as much work as I can each day now. I'm inspired to do a lot of work, right? I don't know it's because I realize I'm heading over there and I'm going through. <laughs> I don't. But um, that's, a, that's, that's basically it right now. I'm trying to be very honest. I'm, ja inspires me. No way. Everything. He grinning. <laughs> 